Dear colleagues and dear friends, this time I will introduce you the Lambert problem, already developed two centuries ago by famous mathematicians, and says how to determine the orbit of a planet or in any celestial body just knowing its position in two different time frames. Or it can be used for an interplanetary mission study just knowing the orbit of the target planet. As usual, we start from the mathematical development and then we make a practical example. The problem formulation says that two vectors are known. Also, for each one, three coordinates in the space or two in the plane or one modulus and an angle. Moreover, is known the flying time in between two positions. What we need to find? The trajectory, which is matching the two positions, and the trajectory is a conic. We assume being an ellipse or a parabola. We are not losing generality if we refer to a planar problem since two vectors always are laying within a plane and moreover an ellipse is also a flat cube. The first application is for finding an orbit of a celestial body whose position is known in two different times. An example is represented here by the asteroid Ceres. This is mostly used in astronomy. Another application is to target a celestial body whose orbit is known from a defined position. This is mostly the case of the interplanetary missions. As example, a travel from the Earth to Venus. We know the living date and the position of the Earth. We know the target position within the orbit of Venus, therefore also the time. The problem was initiated from the German mathematician Heinrich Lambert and eventually formally solved by Lagrange. Gauss also developed a systematic procedure for its numerical solution while discovering the orbit of the asteroid Ceres in 1801. After him, many other methods have been discovered and fine-tuned to solve this problem under different boundary conditions. We want here to study the Lambert problem adopting the classical Lagrange approach and then a simple numerical method, the dissection one, which differs from the one used by Gauss. Let's start from the Kepler equations. There are five and five unknowns. The knowns are also five. You can see this system is containing transcendent equations, which are difficult to solve. The greatest obstacle is to find the guess value of five components, which must be close to the solution. Our orbit needs three parameters, the measure semi-axis A, the eccentricity E, and the argument of the periapsis theta zero. On top, we don't know the two eccentric anomalies E1 and E2, while the known variables are the flying time, the R1, R2, theta one, and theta two, which defines the position of the starting and arrival points. We have seen that we need only three parameters to define the orbit. The orbit lays on a plane defined by two vectors r1 and r2. However, by using the Kepler equations, we must solve five unknowns at once. The intuition of Lambert, which is great, is that the time of flight depends only upon a, which is the energy of the orbit. And this intuition was formally demonstrated by Lagrange. Let's see how. To demonstrate it, we introduce two geometrical parameters, the chord C and the semi-perimeter S. The chord is the modulus of the difference S vector between R2 and R1. This is the chord. The semi-perimeter is the half of the perimeter of the triangle defined by R1, R2 and C. Moreover, we introduce two new variables, alpha and beta, which depends upon two other variables, phi and psi, and phi and psi depends upon the eccentric anomalies, capital E1, capital E2, and the eccentricity E. All three of them are unknown, but now we can solve the problem. By replacing the two variables, alpha and beta, in the first Kepler equation, we see that the eccentricity E disappears. On top, the new angles are only dependent upon 
the boundary conditions, which are known, and the semi-axis A, which is our unknown. Definitely, we can say that from the first equation, the transfer time is only a function of A, because alpha and beta are only depending upon A. From the second equation, we can find alpha inverting the sine function, and because of the ambiguity, also the solution 2 pi minus alpha shall be considered. And for the third equation, we find beta also inverting the sine function, and the sine is positive or negative, depending if the angle between R1 and R2 is less or greater than 180 degrees. How to find the other parameters? Once alpha and beta are found, by replacing back phi and psi, we can determine the eccentricity using this formula. The third value we need for the orbit is theta zero, the argument of the periapsis. And at first, we need the eccentric anomaly capital E1, which can be also found by means of A and E, already discovered, and then by using this formula, we can determine the difference between theta 1 known and theta 0 unknown, and then theta 0 can be calculated. Let's see now an example. We are starting from the Earth on a defined date, the 14th of September 2023. Question is, what is the minimum transfer time for reaching Venus? First of all, the transfer time depends upon the starting position of the planet, which in this case is quite near. And secondary, we are limited with elliptical solutions. Hyperbolic ones uh, have less transfer time, but they are not interesting for practical applications since the delta V is too high. Therefore, the minimum delta T is found when the transfer orbit is parabolic. And uh, the Lambert equation says the expression for delta T, for the flight time. This depends upon the boundary conditions only. There is no the semi-axis A any longer because in this case it's infinite. And the eccentricity is 1. Let's say this is a special case of elliptical orbit. Eventually, the parable is geometrically defined by the two points starting at the Earth, arriving at Venus, and the focus at the Sun's position. And since the Venus is moving along its orbit, the arrival position is found iteratively. We set practically the delta t of Venus along its orbit first, then we calculate the arrival position of the planet accordingly, and we calculate the delta t given by the Lambert equation, and we repeat the procedure till when the two delta t are matching, and we find in this case 48 days. Now we see another problem. This time we need to encounter Venus at a defined position and the arrival position is also given since we know the Venus orbit. And um, above in the table there are the radius and the angle of the two planets starting from the Earth on the same date as before. The arrival at Venus is on 20th of February 2024. The time of flight must be 158 days. Let's find the elliptical orbit from the Lambert equation. To solve it, we need to get an iterative approach. We start from a guess, and the minimum semi-axis A is the one which makes the sine E square equal to 1, that is S divided by 2, the half of the semi-perimeter. This value we take as reference for the lower limit, then we define an upper limit for A, putting the double of it, that is S. We remember that S, the semi-perimeter, is defined at a slight 8. And then we get, as first guess for A, the average among the two values. From the given radius R1 and R2, and also from the angles theta 1 and theta 2, we can determine the chord C at the semi-perimeter S. Replacing the value, 
for A, we get as first guess 1.0998 UA. And um, the angle alpha and beta we can also calculate as per slide 9. And eventually we get the value of function G, which says 360 days. But unfortunately, this is too much. This is greater than 158. So we need to change A into now the mean between the found A and the lower limit. And the new value is 0 0.9165 UA. We continue with the new iterations till when we match the given time of 158 days. But it can happen, nevertheless, that the iteration is jumping to a lower value, like here at the step number 5. So we have to correct our next guess, replacing A with a higher value, the value of the step before. So not any longer using the minimum, but using a value higher. From now on, the next step, let's say n plus 1, we use for the guess the mean between the current iteration n and the n minus 1 or n minus 2, depending if we need to increase or decrease delta t. So here are some examples. In this case, we use n minus 2 and here n minus 1. When the delta t equals 158 days, which is our target, then the semi-axis A is found and also the corresponding angles alpha and beta. With the formulas at slide 10, we can determine the eccentricity E and then theta zero by means of the angle capital E1. And definitely the transfer orbit is found with the corresponding parameters a, e, and theta zero. By means of this video, we have learned how to determine the orbit of a planet by starting from two observations or how to determine the transfer orbit which allows to reach one planet knowing the orbit of the target one. And uh, if we know the orbit, then we can determine also the speed, the velocities, and uh, the delta Vs, which must be applied to our rocket. But this part has been covered already by other videos. For the time, I hope you have enjoyed it. You have learned something new, which can be used for further developments. See you again.